Is it the case, Danny, that because it's Manchester United, certain members of the media are quick to go in the negative direction? Um, no, I don't think it's because it's Man United. They want to knock them down. I think we always, in the media, tend to look at the negative before the positive, generally. And I could, I have maybe have been guilty of that in the past. Um, I actually think that needs to change. It's not going to, but in my, in my idealistic world that I tend to live in. Why does it happen at all? Because we are, I think we're just that way, aren't we? In, especially in this country, we're very negative. I'd say we're a half glass empty nation. But why does it exist at all? That's my point. This is Manchester United. Is it because it's Manchester United? No. That there's a bit of envy and jealousy elsewhere. I think it's any any corporate corporation or club or successful entity that's got wealth and got power. I think that's probably a good starting point as to why there's jealousy. That's why people don't like Simon. Well, that's true. Isn't, isn't it a utopia? <laughs> we, we do. I mean, Denny is right. It's reflective of our society, but it's 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 across the board. I think it's not just rela- relational to this country. Mm. I lived in Spain for years. Lived in America for years. If you go to a restaurant and you have a good meal, you tell one person. If you go to a restaurant and you've had a bad meal, you tell ten. It's reflective of how society mm. is constructed. We all our news. You go to America. You go to Spain. You go to look at the news. It's led with tragedy, mm. not good news, because tragedy sells. Because bad news sells. Now, in the situation of Man United. This is a football club that occupies so much interest because it's been so successful. So it's judged by a very different set of standards. It has a very different feel about it. It has a very different uh, uh, heritage and value set. So it gets into that. And then you've got this ridiculous array of blinded pundits that are so partisan to Manchester United Mm. that there's almost a a levelling out in other people's minds where they push back about it. But we're not hearing much about that at the moment, though, Simon. Uh, 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 That people are queuing up, as you may suggest, to to lavish praise on United and yet they have been they're the most successful team of late in terms of form in oh. the league five wins from the last yeah. six league games I know but, but no one is giving them games. a let's, kind of metaphorical pat in the back let's have, let's have a look at these games let's have a look at who they're playing against and see so you're qualifying it well because it needs to be qualified because you're uh, we, we, we had this conversation two or three weeks ago I think about the form team going into it and they've struggled past Sheffield United and they struggled past XYZ team with last minute goals I thought Everton would beat them on Sunday so did I well, there, and, you've and, just argued and against you. And so, and well, no, they they uh, came no, right no. through the bare no. atmosphere. Let's, let's nuance that. Why did I think Everton would beat Man United? Because Everton had a need that was far greater than Manchester United. Everton were going to create a bare pit in atmosphere. That's what I'm saying. So exactly. I expected Everton to come out and do a job, and ultimately they didn't because a wonder goal created a division in the camp, uh, created a division in the game. They lost their heads, and, and Man United took control. And fair, by the way, fair play to Man United. Yeah, but when you've play. got a team yeah. that spends the most amount of money in football with the most noise and a constant, uh, but we all know that doesn't uh, always work. So uh, that that is, doesn't equal so success. That is the reasons. Why why they get lots of focus. It's like forever and a day now, Todd Bowley's going to be an idiot American owner until he's not. When Mm. Man United start winning again, the dial will turn. But we've had 10 years of Man United they were the noise. We had managers that turned around and said, yeah, "Look at the noisy neighbours." We had, man- we had, we've had everyone turn around and suggest that oh, you're getting banned because I don't like what Fer- Ferguson didn't like what the BBC had to say. You're out. You're getting banned. So with that in mind, comes with the expectation. Yeah, I do agree. No, but you, you, get you more immediately focus. fell in the trap, though, with, with respect. But look, in, look, look at who they played recently. Because and it's then true. We, and then we That's look, balance. But then we look ba- to Everton. You, then we look to Everton, and so many members of the media thought they will galvanise. The whole place will galvanise on Sunday. Did, done. Goodison will be a bear pit. United did a good job. Now, Ten Hag was more than entitled to come out at the end of that game and say, how'd you like that kind of character? Mm. But he didn't. Well, uh, yeah, he's not going to. He's too clever and cute for that. Because yeah. when they get beat against Galatasaray, they'll be eating those. They will, well, they'll beat Galatasaray. I think they will. They'll beat them. They might do. They'll beat them. They're Galatasaray no, and no world beat them. They should, they'll they beat them. They should do that. They're ordinary. They? Did they beat them at Old Trafford? No, they lost. Oops, dear. They'll beat them tonight. Okay, we'll They'll see. They'll beat them tonight. I think the... the, uh, the we'll see. The, but there's a narrative around them, and I can see it. Oh, are you are you being serious? There's a, there's a narrative around Manchester United? Ten Hag greatly is suggesting it. I don't think... Because Ten Hag comes out with I don't think it's an times. unrealistic... <laughs> I don't think it's an unrealistic narrative. I don't think it... I think it's just the truthful one of them struggling to this part of the season. I think it's it's everywhere because they're so, such a big club. But I don't think it's... It's fake in any way. It's a true reflection. They have really been struggling, and he is under pressure. Yeah. Now, I mean, win at Gala, then they played Chelsea, Bournemouth, Liverpool. Mm. 
If they were to win three of those four, all there of a the sudden go. they have turned yeah. a corner. Yeah. And you can start looking at Man United again and settling. Five wins from the last six league games. I kept, I kept on hearing the breakfast show. After December the 1st, he better watch out. He's absolutely bowling um, towards December the well, 1st. Played, they're going like I mean, that. They're fine. going on the right. They're, they're on the, the right. They're also victims of their own success because of the manner in which Man United are perceived in the eyes of Mike. You can't have all the eyes on the prize. You can't get away with blue murder of having achieved very little on the pitch yet, have these financial results that are based upon these commercial deals that you've got left, right and centre without additional scrutiny. When you struggle past Brentford 2-1, past Sheffield United 2-1, when you beat Luton 1-0, and in the middle of that, you get your head handed to you by Copenhagen yeah. in the Champions but League. after day You're one, you were saying your suit didn't fit. So it didn't. you were on him and across him right from the I word mean, got, go. I, and you're admitting I trained it. as a tailor. You're I can see it. it. <laughs> you're admitting it. Do they beat Galatasaray? I've got a feeling they will. I, I think they will. And although they've never they won. After that? Although they've never won. That's a good point you make. Yeah. Chelsea, Bournemouth. Yeah. They've got oh, New sorry. Con- Newcastle. Newcastle. Chelsea, Bournemouth, Liverpool. Yeah. So Newcastle they've away. Newcastle at James's part. See how to get on there. Mm. Mm. It's going to be a big month. For, for, uh, and what about Chelsea? The, te- the, cl- the team you said would be challenging for the title when no, you hit your no, head in a low beam no, coming into the studio. I didn't. No, I didn't. I said they'll be they will be inside the top four. All right, that's what I said. And I okay. said they'll win the league in three years with which manager I don't know. Well, you won't. Have to, to be honest, it won't matter because when they don't in three years, you won't be here to have to oh, face right. it. They, they'll have got rid of me by that time because my editorial content doesn't fit anymore. Well, in any event, Galatasaray, welcome to hell. No longer that, I would uh, I would say. Great, but Galatasaray. Right. Oh yeah, what an atmosphere they'll be there tonight. Wilfred Zaha Istanbul. will sling one in like he did at Old Trafford. What a football city, I have to say. Mm-hmm. I've been at Galatai Fenerbahce honest to God it's unmissable by the way, you're second rate and you're going to get beat by Man United tonight says Jim White ok we shall see what happens but it's live trying to on Top positive. Sport we're trying to change the narrative to positive Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker Talk sport.